We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. What's up, ladies and germ balls? It is Wednesday, January 1st, 2014's Happy New Year. Did I say 14s? I guess I need to get used to saying 2014 and not say 14s. Oh, 2014, what a what a weird reality that it's like it's not the 90s anymore. It's not even 99. You know, it, 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 it time flies. I feel old and young at the same time. I'm 27 today. I didn't turn 27 today, but I am 27 today, and uh, welcome to, I don't know what you'd call this, I guess episode one of season one, official season one. Anytime I say that something is official and going on uh, without interruption, it gets interrupted, and um, it doesn't work out. So this is not the official anything. Anyways, I hope you're having a great New Year's already. I have have invested into this show, into these. Um, you pull the day one day at a time. You pull the calendar apart, and it gets smaller and smaller. And at the end of the year, there's nothing left. One a day calendars, and whatever you'd like me to cover, I probably will. And I do have a lot to get to. I think I have a. Uh, um, an insight from my favorite nerd and yours too, Ashley, who's going to be informing us as to why we watched the ball drop. I haven't heard her bit yet on that, but I asked her, I said, um, if you don't mind me calling you a big nerd all the time, I would like to um, have you as a regular segment on the show. That is... Uh, amazing us with your nerdness, but I said, sit here at my desk right now this morning, and I'm looking through this um, newspaper from last year and from yesterday. Um, I'm amazed at how comfortable and easy it is to read and talk at the same time, and I have, you know, my mic, scissor lift, stand, and the mic, and the whole deal, and it's just very easy to do one of the things i thought about doing is um like getting the newspaper delivered to my house but what i really want is a world news thing which i guess is covered in like major events i guess would be covered in all local whatever um but it's just not major enough for me you know um but i did find a couple sections of this very interesting this, of course, what I'm reading right now is the signed Marysville Journal Tribune from last year and yesterday, Tuesday, December 31st, 2013, which sounds so much more natural to say. And it is signed by me and Todd because I will be saving this newspaper forever. And um, what I've decided to do right now is to read from a little bit of the segments that stood out to me the most of this news newspaper and January 1st of 2013. I have that newspaper as well, I think. Let me go uh, look at it here when we take a break. But um, for just because I think it's um, it holds historical relevance, which is what I which is what I like. It's what I'm into. You know, what what are you into? I'm into this. So anyways, oh, happy new year. I what did I do for New Year's? Everyone everyone was texting me all week long and saying, "What are you doing for New Year's? It's got to be epic, right?" Because you're like the world's coolest guy, you know. I said, "I'm I'm really not that cool. I'm going to be sitting at home. Um, I'm going to be preparing taco soup, which I fantasized about all week, and I'm finally going to be able to do it. D doing it, and um." Todd's coming over, and we're just going to watch the ball drop, and uh, that was it. Ashley, world's world's most notorious nerd, called me on the phone, and um, I don't say that she's a nerd as an insult. She wears that title very happily, and um, we love having her on this presentation, don't we, boys and girls? But I thought in that newspaper, um, 
I asked Todd on his way over, please pick up a Marysville. I'm very specific. I'm very demanding. Um, you can call me Hollywood if you'd like. It has to be a Marysville paper, and it has to be today's. And I need you to get it for me. And I didn't even re reimburse him. His taco soup was his payment for the newspaper. And the thing about a newspaper is what I like to do if I go on any kind of trips, I will get a newspaper, or at least I'll try to remember to. The first time I met Ashley, uh, it was an excuse to travel to Fort Wayne which is only two hours away, but I was in Fort Wayne for what I believed was the first time in my life, and I was enjoying it, whatever. So I got a newspaper there, and I had her sign it because it marks what you were doing on... It marks who you were with and what location... Excuse me, and what location, and it also marks um, the date. So when you get a local newspaper on a trip, on a road trip, it... Uh, you can keep that newspaper forever, and you can say this is what is going on in the world on that day when we were on that trip, and this is where we was. One of my favorite papers in my collection is um, a paper from Toledo. No, where was it? I should have got him before I started recording, but it's like uh, it was right below uh, Toledo, and me and Sabrina were going to the zoo that day, and that was the Sandy Hook the day of or the day after the Sandy Hook school shooting thing. So... Um, Anyways, enough about newspapers. So yesterday in history I thought was interesting. And what I would like to be able to do is this day in history um, for every day. However, I only have four points to make from this day in history. So if I get a newspaper delivered to my home, I might be able to rock you with this day in history a lot more. And um, do not be dismayed. It won't just be me. I'll try to get some lovely guests. Speaking of other people, I have an amazing interview from Christina. If you don't know her, you soon will. And I'll uh, try to give her all the plugs if you want to get in uh, touch with her for whatever reason. Um, I would rather not say a word about her until you hear her say a word about herself. You will not want to miss this interview. I, it's actually, I kind of wanted that to go up on... January 2nd, tomorrow's show, um, but I don't have that interview finished because I recorded half of it. She had to go. It was over the phone, and I need to get her on the horn, I guess, tomorrow and record the other half if she's not too busy. But anyways, yesterday in, interest, yesterday in history I thought was very interesting. Um, just the way they word it in the paper was kind of cool. It says, today is Tuesday, December 31st, the 365th and final day of 2013. And today's highlights and histories are on the 31st of December in 1875, Thomas Edison first publicly demonstrated his electric incandescent light in Menlo Park, New Jersey. Uh, there's some Revolutionary War stuff. Um, let's see. I'm trying to skip through without pausing in silence too much. In 1862, President Abraham Lincoln, on Jan uh, December 31st, in 1862, Abraham Lincoln signed an, an enabling act, paving the way for Virginia's western colonies to become the state of West Virginia, which took place in June of 1863, so about a year or more later. Uh, which I, and I thought it was interesting. Do not judge me, okay? Oh, I guess that was only six months later. So that's good. The Manhattan Bridge spanning the East River between Manhattan and Brooklyn was officially open to regular traffic on December 31st in 1909. Frank Sinatra opened a signing engagement at New York's Paramount Theater in 1942 on December 31st. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but that's the sound of my cell phone in, uh, causing broadcasting sin. You should not have your phone on in the studio. Oh, my love. All right. I'm tired of it. And I didn't want to go through all of these because it is quite a list, but I do love this day in history. I wish that these uh, this calendar that I bought that had this day in history, I wish it had like 
20 facts this day in history, even if some of them were kind of boring. Because what it has is four. One from general history, I guess. One from the entertainment world. One from sports. And one from uh, a famous birthday. And we'll get into that in just a moment. It'll be topical because I will cover January 1st, this day in history. Oh, I should start out every show that way. I should just say, what's up, ladies and germballs? Today is blah, 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 on blah, 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 2014, and on this day in history in 1863, and just get right into it. That should be the intro of every daggone show. And then if you don't like the rest of the show, you can just shut me off after you hear the little tidbit about this day in history. And I can practice my broadcaster voice as well. So we got Frank Sinatra um, on December 31st in 1946. President Harry S. Truman officially proclaimed the end of hostilities in World War II. And if you hear me saying something incorrectly, not pronouncing it correctly, please send me some hate mail. You can go to douglascrabtree.com. That is www.d-o-u-g-l-a-s-c-r-a-b-t-r-e-e.com. All my current contact information is right there under the Contact Me tab. And I hope that site is there anytime you may listen to this in the future. Moving on here, some of the stuff I did not recognize, so it was no longer um, interesting to me. Um, Anyone know who Rick Nelson is? I don't know. I guess a singer. In in 1986, the year of my birth, on December 31st, 97 people were killed when fire broke out at the DuPont Plaza Hotel in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Three hotel workers later pled guilty to in connection with the blaze. Very sad thing that happened the year of my birth on this day. So when that fire was taking place, I was six, seven months old and um, had no concept of it. When Todd was here and I read this to him, he said, do you remember that on the news? Believe it or not, at six months old, I don't recall that coming on the news. I wasn't a big fan of the news until I became an adult, and it's for historical um, records purposes, because I don't think anyone does a better job at capturing and preserving the facts. You take 9-11, and you know, if it weren't for CNN and other radio networks, other TV uh, networks, we wouldn't have a clue what happened. Um, we would just have word of mouth, newspaper articles, people who've seen it would write. But, you know, if we didn't have the radio and the video capabilities that we have, we really wouldn't know what happened. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have a relation to it because we wouldn't be able to see it and experience it. Uh, on that day, we got to experience it through media, and it affected us all so much more, I believe, than it would have had it not been. And I think that's good in a way that we were affected as deeply as we was on 9-11 because I think it made us stronger as a nation. It may not have made our government stronger, but as a nation generally. And I think tolerance went up that day and we we had to realize what was important and what wasn't. Uh, Moving on here. Oh... I think that's it. Let's see. Trying to skim through. I don't want to. One year ago, racing the clock, the White House reached a New Year's Eve accord with Senate Republicans to block access to block New Year's Eve. Why can't I read? To block across the board taxes, increases, and spending cuts in government programs due to take effect at midnight. That's the one paragraph. There was three facts crammed into one paragraph, and at first I thought. And then there were some good birthdays. I would love to cover birthdays every day just to famous people because I find it interesting. But if if the show goes on for years and I cover famous birthdays every day, you know, it's, it's old news. But uh, what I should do is before I turn the recorder on, I should go through and highlight my favorites. I want to know when Leonardo DiCaprio's birthday is, don't you? So I think that's all out of December 31st, 
yesterday and last year's newspaper that I wanted. I don't have a newspaper for today, but I do have tons of news websites, but I'm not going to browse the internet while I talk to you because I wanted a more hands-on approach. And my computer screensaver just kicked on, and if it screws up my recording because of that, I'm going to be sad. So that's it. Um, feel free to send me um, what you want to talk about here. Um, and you can call me and text me too anytime. And uh, if you want to be on this thing, I will more than likely do that. If I find you a person to be a person of interest, I'll put you on right here. So the thing about these calendar things that I pull off, um, what do I do with them? After I'm read, after I have read them, I hate to throw them away, especially the um, Jeopardy trivia, because I can like put them in a barrel of monkeys. I can put them in a a box and pull one out for people to see if they can. Answer. I just thought that would be interesting. So let me practice here. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? balls? It is Wednesday, January 1st, 2014. Happy New Year's on this day in history. In 1863, President Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, which declared that all slaves in the rebel states were free. That's pretty significant. Uh, it's an honor to be alive on January 1st just because that happened in 1863. Imagine, you know, think about how long ago that was. So get over it. Slaves are free. And they should have been. And I wonder about that, uh, the, the slavery thing. You know, in school it was learned about, but it really wasn't learned about, like, why that all happened. I think it was all business more than anything. And it definitely proved that our heads were in the right place. Not to say they are today. But in any ways, but in any ways, but in any event, I thought that was rather significant. 1863, President Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, which declared that all slaves in the rebel states were free. So next time you see racism, just scream out, Emancipation Proclamation, bro, get over it, 1863. I'm trying to be funny, and it's not working. In the entertainment world, in 1985, on this day, VH1 premiered as an adult contemporary music video channel with Marvin Gaye's Star Spangled Banner video. So I could imagine what that would have been like. You know, and I would look up every one of these and give you clips of these, but YouTube appears to crack down on my channel quite a bit more than others. I don't know why. I'm the favored chosen one, but it seems to be that way. And uh, unfortunately, that is what's going on. Because I had some legendary stuff I wanted to show you, and they took it down. And I don't even think it would be safe for me to mention it. This is not satellite radio, where I can say whatever I want. Even then, there would be copyright issues. You know, you copyrighted something, you pay to have it preserved. But this video, you know, if I was making a million bucks off of this video and someone wanted to repost it... I mean, if they gave me credit for it or they advertised the thing that I was advertising, I wouldn't be upset with them because I know all and am all understanding. You know what I'm saying? Right? Don't you think? Don't you think? Okay. In sports, 1954, the Rose Bowl and the Cotton Bowl were shown in color for the first time. Imagine seeing the Cotton Bowl and the Rose Bowl in color on the 1st of January for the first time in color. So, brand new year, brand new month, brand new way to watch football. Of course, you had to exist in 1954 for that to come into your life. Today's famous birthday in 1895, J. Edgar Hoover, first director of FBI. I don't know what that means. I thought he was known for much different things, but apparently his birthday was on January 1st in 1895. What an old man he is. Old but wise. 
I have an inspirational thought for you. I wish you could see the picture that I'm looking at. I'm looking up into trees, beautiful trees. This little nugget, excuse me, this little nugget of advice I have indigestion. I I overate on taco soup. I'm not going to lie about it. <laughs> and uh, it was a little rough on my stomach. Um, this inspirational dealio says, if we want to change a situation, we first have to change ourselves. And to change ourselves effectively, we must, we first have to change our perception. And it says page 18, but I don't know what it's talking about. I, oh, it's from a book. It's from a book. How crass of me. I don't even, I threw away the cover page. Let me find it here. Oh, I think I threw away the cover page a long time ago. It's, um, um it is from a book. That's going to bug me forever. Somebody else will know. Somebody who has the same calendar will attack me for saying it. But that's the words wrote by someone else, so don't get up in arms too much. But, uh, yes. So, what I would like to do with these is give my two cents, and I would like you to give your two cents, because there will be a time in our uh, lives together where we will be reading emails and being best friends together. And, you know, it's not for everyone to listen to, but it's definitely for the person who wants the background noise, who wants um, to hear what I got to say about anything. Most of all, Life with Doug Radio, or as I like to say, LWDR, is for me. You cannot do art or any kind of artistic expression or any kind of expression at all for someone else because then it becomes work. I, don't, I wouldn't want to sit here and chat with you if it was work. I would hate it. I would hate you and your face, and uh, we wouldn't be best buddies now, would we? But anyways, if we want to, so anyways, I thought about, um, I want to I wanna read these every day, and I want to yak about them, and I want my co-host here, whoever that may be at whatever time, and uh, I, I, I have another one, these Jeopardy questions. I actually just picked up this calendar yesterday. Uh, when I was out with Todd, and I thought it would be interesting to quiz myself and you, and you can quiz other folks, and I'm going to hang on to these and use them in the future, but I probably shouldn't use the ones I can't pronounce. Most of the questions, I can't even pronounce the words in them. Anyways, I'm being over-descriptive, and it's getting old. So here's my two cents. If we, if we want to change a situation, we first have to change ourselves. And to change ourselves effectively, we first have to change our perceptions. Um, my biggest thing on change in your life, and what a great thing to talk about for the first of the year. A lot of folks have New Year's resolutions. I know I do have a whole list of them, which I think is good and healthy. You want to adapt. You want to grow. You want to become more mature and healthy mentally, emotionally, physically, every day of your life. I'm all about um, don't, just, don't just survive, however, thrive, survive and thrive, do both, preferably thrive more than survive. Survive means you're not dead yet, and you're making sure you don't die yet. Thriving means you're getting better. You're not going back, you're moving forward, you're getting happier, better, smarter, wiser, stronger, Every single day, physically, mentally, and emotionally, is very important. Um, it's very important to. It's very important for survival. I think is growing. Um, because if you don't try new things, or as this thing says, if you don't become a new person when necessary, you don't evolve. And um, you got to. And don't hear the word evolved and freak out and say I'm not a Christian. You know, I'm talking about um, maturity and happiness and the pursuit of the pursuit of such things, which invo which requires some evolution to happen in your life all the time. I know that I am not the same person I was when I was 21 or 22 or 23, and uh, even when I look back at some of the relationships I had. I feel sorry for any woman who dated me at that time and probably would at this time because I'm just not me. I, I'm a different person. 
Um, on one hand, I've um, became more angelic nowadays, 2014. And on the other hand, I became um, more grown up. So, by the way, don't let me forget to mention um, uh, our young lady who has passed away in 2013. I would like to speak about her and uh, send prayers and love to uh, one of my very best friends in the world, people who survived her. But um, let me get back to this thing here. This is saying to change a situation, you have to change yourself. Um, yes and no. If you want to try, if you want something new to happen, you need to try something new. So welcome to 2014. Good luck. Do your best. And if you want things to change, which I believe whether people admit it or not, almost everybody kind of goes into a new year with something on their mind that they would like to make a change about. Um, I, I, the, the possibilities are in this every single person. I think it's part of our hardwiring of our brain to want to uh, thrive and to do better every day and it's certainly every year. Like when you look back on all last year and you think, what's the one thing I wanted to change and never did last year? Okay, this is the year I change it. And I, for some people, I know for me, when that ball drops in Times Square and it hits the bottom, it's not the beginning of a new year only. It's also the beginning of my New Year's resolution, which is just... Which is just, a, I guess, a goal, or for me, it's more like something added onto my don't list and something added onto my do list. Uh, for me, a New Year's resolution is not what do I want to try to achieve in 2014. For me, it's what I want to change completely, starting immediately. 2014. I won't get into all that because, not because it's personal, but because I just, you know. It's going to be even more boring, I think, than what this last 27 minutes has been. So God bless you for hanging in there. So this says, if you want to change the situation, we must first change ourselves. And why is my phone blowing up this whole time? Seven text messages just in the last few minutes. Uh, we'll get into that. <clears throat> I think if you want something to change in your life, you need to try something new. If you're trying something that you've tried before and nothing changed, you know, you might blame yourself to avoid trying something new and say, well, I'll just get better and try it again. Don't. Try something new and change yourself at the same time. <clears throat> it also says, and to change ourselves effectively, we first have to change our perceptions. That's a good point. Uh, perception is everything, and that's a figure of speech that means... Um, I could be having a conversation with somebody and me and that person understand each other well. Third party perspective or perception will say might be that the person I'm talking to is upset. And that could be because I, they know how they perceive me and they're happy and I know them. So I know they're happy, but the way they act, their particular personality is viewed by this third person and they might determine that the person I'm talking to is upset. It, uh, an example, I guess, would be someone who is uh, sarcastic, you know, and you might you might know that person's joking, but perception is everything to the person over here who thinks that you're offending this person, and that is just one example. Um, the possibilities are endless when you think about perception is everything. So, oh, I kind of lost my train of thought. As far as perception as everything goes, it's um, right now I'm ready to hit the stop record button because I don't want to um, sit here and do, 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 think about what I was saying. I've heard a lot of people say that when they, when they start a big recording or broadcasting project their first couple of years, they find themselves stumbling going, well, why did I uh, talk so fast or I mean, was I nervous or uncomfortable? It's only uncomfortable thinking about how a lot of people is going to really hate what you do publicly. And like I said, you know, it's for me. And it's available in case someone wants it. But really, it's for me. I'm the one who wants to look back and remember what happened and remember what was going on that day. 
Um, I guess it's just a branch of my personality. But if you want to know why I got into recording or broadcasting, whatever you choose to call it, it's because I've been told to many times by friends. Like, wow, you need to go into radio because you just, you got it. And I'm like, I don't got it, but thanks for noticing. <laughs> Perception is everything. Um, a lot of people get in trouble at work because they think they're working with the team, and they're not. And when I say they, I mean myself. I was in hot water at work once upon a time last year, and it was because I was perceiving my uh, role on the team to be great, but I was not being perceived that way by the team. And I thought, I don't live inside their mind. They don't live in my mind, so I need to use that as education to realize that not everybody is me and I'm not everybody. So we're not going to see eye to eye. I mean, you ever like saw someone on TV or talked to someone or heard about someone and their philosophy on a certain topic, just it gave you a headache and astounded you at the same time because of how drastically different they perceived the situation than you did. And I think that's what it is. Diversity makes the world go round. Um, it makes our world interesting. Even if it's negative interesting, it's still interesting. And, uh, I mean, how incredibly boring would it be if everyone was like you and you were like everyone? We would all be drones and we would all, there would be no uh, artistic creation. If, uh, uh, someone told me the other day that God is so artistic and creative, he gave us all this artistic power and it's just a branch of him. That's a great way to think about it if you so choose. <clears throat> there would be no artistic, um, what's the word, explosion of art, I guess, in a way, if there wasn't that creativity and, more importantly, that diversity that exists in the world. So I'm not trying to be all um, pushing my beliefs or, you know, my, my angle is going to attempt to be humorous every day when we talk. But, um, you know, I don't know. I guess it's just, uh, I, I, honesty is all I have to give. So I'm going to try to do that, even if it's boring to some or whatever. But I really am going to try not to care what people think. But in the back of my mind, I do because, you know, you don't want someone saying, hey, I listened to you for a little bit and I want my 10 minutes back, you know. But you're, you're going to have that, definitely. One quote I love is when Whippy Goldberg was talking about she told her mother she wanted to get into entertainment. And um, I don't necessarily want to get into entertainment. I just want to um, record my thoughts and be able to review them at any time. And I will open them up publicly due to the fact that people also would be interested. But she told her mother, I want to get into entertainment. And she said, what is your advice? And her mom said, um, there's only one thing I'll tell you. It's very important. You must keep in mind one thing that um, not everybody's going to like what you do. So you got to grow a thick skin right now. So enough of that. Last but not least, we have our Jeopardy question for the day. I'm going to not, I should call someone to ask them, but I don't know how to pronounce what the words I'm reading. It You know, the topic is romantic myth mythical pairs. And I'm cheating right now. And I still don't get it, how the, how the category matches the answer or the question. But you might, okay? So, without looking it up, think hard, because I surely don't know. Even after I read the answer, I didn't know. I'm, sometimes I'll see one of these Jeopardy questions. Me and Todd went through a ton of them uh, last night um, before we rang in the new year, and uh, we was having a lot of fun with them. A lot of them are discouraging me. I think I shouldn't have bought the calendar, but then I see some that I'm glad I did. But... In respect to the calendar, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quiz you guys, and you're gonna quiz me, and we're gonna, you know what I mean? We're gonna, anyways. T h i s b e, thisby, 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 and him. T h i s b e and him is the answer. What is the question under romantic mythical pairs? I should read that one tomorrow. Sure, why not? 
send me a comment on Facebook under this link. And um, should I read it tomorrow? Does it even matter? Like, who could possibly care? I think I'll read the answer tomorrow. Um, I'll make a note on it that says answer on January 2nd. And um, when I see, if I see your comment before then and you've decided that you would like to participate and answer it, a little bit of involvement, I will not only read your answer, I will tell you whether you're right or wrong or not, and I will also take that opportunity to make fun of you in any way that I want or to plug whatever you need plugged here in front of an audience. So the question for January 1st is... You tell me what the question is, but the answer under the category of romantic mythical pairs is Thisbe and him, T-H-I-S-B-E and him, and I have no idea what that is. So what I would love for you to do is not only answer it, but tell me what it means. That would be awesome. I would love to read your stuff here. We should just have the Facebook segment of our show. Um, I think that's it, but one thing I wanted to do is I wanted to give you Ashley. Now, answering the question, why do we celebrate New York City? Why do we enjoy the ball drop? I think I know. Okay, I'll go. I haven't heard what she had to say yet. But I think I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and give you what I think's going on based on a couple tiddly bits I've heard before. Um, we celebrate the ball drop because there were clocks long time ago that used gravity to pull the ball down and they'd have to be raised at midnight back up to start the new day. So when the ball hit the bottom, the day was over. And in this case, the year was over on December 31st to mark the new year. And people decided to celebrate that. It was, I, it was due to some company wanting to do something involving a promo or whatever. So it became an appropriate time to celebrate the arrival of a new year. It became tradition in New York because that particular um, advertisement company, whatever, was right there in New York. At first, they did it with, like, fireworks only. And then it moved into, we got to um, start doing it with uh, something else that doesn't burn people. I guess people were getting burned at the bottom. And, and I'm not the only person in uh, in a public medium that has talked about this. It was all over the news yesterday, and it was really cool to watch. I just don't remember all of it, but Ashley's going to put the final kibosh on the whole thing. But anyways, I think they introduced the ball drop. Some guy was like, okay, we have these new electric light bulbs now. It'll be cool. We'll just let it drop the way the clocks do. It'll mark the new year. It'll bring, It'll keep people's attention right here. And at that time, there was a few thousand people that would gather right there. Now there's a few million. The way it's set up for, you know, and I love the fact that tradition is so strong. I've never been to New York City, but I would absolutely love to go. And that's something that's on my bucket list in life is to go down there and celebrate with those crazy people. And some of them come from all over the world, you know. But anyways, last but not least, I'm going to leave you with this little nugget. And that is a sound file. Of what Ashley had to say, the world's biggest nerd, my most nerdy friend, my favorite person, AG holding it down, what's good? Here's what she had to say. Why do we, Ashley, let me ask you a question, Ashley. Why do we celebrate a new year? And what is it? Times Square? Why do we watch a weird lit up ball fall down? And why do we shoot off fireworks? So it's uh, New Year's fast approaching. I was meet a lot of people with their eyes towards New York, either live or on television, to watch the broadcast or in person, the ball drop. Now, the tradition of Times Square itself started in 1904 when the New York Times building decided to have a midnight fireworks spectacle to bring more people in. Before that, people gathered near the Trinity Church in downtown Manhattan to hear the bells go off at midnight. Three years later, the publisher of the New York Times and owner, Adolf Oaks, um, approached someone to make a new light display. And that is when 
the ball drop was made that we know of today. Now, the ball drop is actually designed after time ball, which is a naval um, instrument, I guess you could call it. And what happened is the early 1800s, um, near near the coastal areas, they would have a time ball that would be dropped around either noon or one so that nearby captains know what to set their navigating instruments to. Matter of fact, even to, up until today, at places like the U.S. Naval Observatory in Washington, D.C., they will drop the ball at noon every day so that the captains know as well. So now that was taken and put onto the building and from 1907 until today, it has been done every year except for two because of times of war when New York was in a dim out. And it started with a 700-pound ball with 100 lights on it, which is a wooden ball. And then it became brass and then aluminum. And it's changed as materials over the times have changed. And now today, it is close to 12,000 pounds. It has almost 3,000 little cut, hand-cut and carved pieces of glass on it to give it the brilliant spectacle of light that is similar to the firework spectacle that draw, draw people's attention in at the beginning. And so now with uh, New Year's fast approaching at 11.59 p.m., December 31st, 2013, millions of eyes will be on that ball as it is dropped once again. There you have it, the world's biggest nerd, my favorite nerdy friend, yours as well, A.G., the mayor of nerdum, the town, the state, the state of mind. Weighing in on the issues, why do we celebrate in New York City? How did it all start? I just, you know, what I asked her to do was give me some backs about it. Anyways, uh, right around the time I was uh, downloading that voicemail from her and making it available for you, I was also calling some folks to try to get them on the horn. I wanted to record recent thoughts about their New Year's shenanigans, and people either did not answer or they were, uh, I guess, not uh, able to talk. That's okay. We, we, we have those problems. It's, it's a bit lonely, though, I will say. But I got to stay up late tonight um, because I got to work at 6.30 in the morning on Thursday and on Friday. I would love to be out of it, to get out of it, but that's not going to happen. And then I'll be available to uh, (sighs) love you through the mic on the weekend. But this is it, LWDR signing off. Oh, yeah, and have a great new year. And uh, we'll talk tomorrow. Questions, comments, or concerns, Facebook's the best way to do it. Get a hold of www.douglascrabtree.com. Hit me up on the Contact Me tab, and I would like to hear from you. And so would you would like to hear from yourself on the show, I think, also. So let me know about it. And give me some news if you want me to record some news. Mm-hmm, got to go. Love you. Bye. You're listening to Life with Doug Radio, presented by my site, DouglasCrabtree.com. This is weird and odd transition sounds. That means you're going from one segment to the next. Uh, what do you think you're doing? I'm almost home, buddy. What are you doing? I'm recording for January 1st episode of... This this new uh, radio gimmick going on over here. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, what, what, what's the topic? The topic right now is what does Austin do for thing or not, for not for Thanksgiving, but for New Year's? Austin uh, jumps around to different friends and family members, different get-togethers to see how they're bringing in 2014. Do a little drinking, did you? Yeah, I got a DD though. Oh, you got a DD? Are you a little loopy right now? I've had a... So, I've been going with a little bit of the alcoholic drink, yes. You do that around your family? Is That's not awkward? No, uh, actually, I just came from uh, some friends of mine from first shift. Little shindig. I'm on my way home now. What's up? Oh, nothing's up. You're what's up. 
you know, I had to get you in here. This is the first uh, episode of the new year. You know, I had to get you on, buddy. You recording right now? Absolutely. You know me. Okay, okay. We're doing business right now. We're doing business right now. Okay. But you gotta, I gotta figure out what your identity is on this little deal here. I don't know if you're my political guy or if you just the guy who brings the sex appeal to the show. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, I think maybe I can be both. The the sexy political guy. <laughs> yeah, I'll be the sexy political guy. The sexy political guy on the phones holding it down. How does a man of your political stature celebrate the uh, upcoming 2014? Well, I watched the uh, I watched the New York ball drop on ABC Six, and uh, <laughs> that's a plug. While I'm while I'm drinking champagne, Shambly, and, pet, and petting a basset hound. You're petting a basset hound. Uh, are you concerned at all about your upcoming election, sir? Uh, what election would that be? The election where you run for uh, Mister Universe. I think I have pretty much in the bag. There's not really any competition out there, and you know, I'm not mean to sound conceited or uh, or cocky. But well, I tell you what, that sounds a little conceited, sir. <laughs> hey, you know what I did? I I uh, I was trying to jo- adopt a black child yesterday. I called the adoption house, you know, and I I said, "Do these black children come with like coupons for grape soda and chicken wings and things like that?" <laughs> And uh, the lady, the lady was not very happy. <laughs> what was the lady on the phone of African American? I don't know. Would it matter? <laughs> I don't know. It depends on her moral status. I said, "Can we get this child quickly?" You know, I don't want to wait around. But um, after my radio show ratings go up, I want to be able to return this child because I, I heard they can get rather rambunctious after they get, you know, a certain age. After they get some grape crushing some KFC up there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit. I said, do they come with chicken grease or is is? I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, do I need to buy the Crisco or do you send it with you? All right. But we're not racist right. here on Life with Doug Radio, are we? I don't think so. No, that's just uh, that's just commentary comedy right there. Commentary comedy. If you can't be racist uh, and if you can't be racist in real life, you can at least joke about it. Isn't that the rule? Yeah, you see, racism is uh, racism is like a phantom. It doesn't really exist. It's just there for comic relief. Right, right. I was kind of hoping to get some nugget gems out of you tonight, but uh, I, you handle your alcohol pretty good, right? Yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling alright. Yeah. So, uh, have you heard from Bub at all this whole time? Joey. Joey, uh, he did call me uh, about two days ago. He wanted me to play pool, and he said that he would call me back, and he never did. Is he a loser? What's going on with him? I don't know, man. I think he was uh, hanging out with his mama or something. Because I called him, and he he did uh, he did kind of what you did. He pulled the hang up on me. And oh, yeah? uh, I think people are kind of intimidated by the new phone number. It scares them a little bit. It was, was like, it was Bret Hart. It was Bret Hart. Who else would it be? It was, it was Bret Hart from fucking Canada. <laughs> this is Bret Hart from Canada. I'm going to take you out in Madison Square Garden, you bald-headed freak. Hey, today, I, you might you would, you would appreciate this. Today I bought uh, the very best um, hardcore no-holds-barred matches things, and I made my friend suffer through it, and that's how I celebrated New Year's. We watched the uh, the ball drop, and then I turned these um, the very best of hardcore matches on, you know. Yeah. And then I adopted a black child, and it came with coupons. So. Wow. Did you, did you get yourself some hundred uh, percent white meat chicken? Hundred percent white meat chicken. Well, no, it didn't come. It the only thing that I have right now is the coupon for the um, grape uh, flavoring for like Kool Aid. <laughs> Which I thought was ridiculous because I don't like the grape flavor only, but that's all I could get right now. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes but. you need some orange and some lemon, but when you get grapes, you gotta you gotta make grape Kool Aid. Yeah, you gotta do your thing. Well, just thought I'd give you a little love here, bro. Appreciate you being on. All right, man. All right, we're pulling my driveway now, so this works out. 
Um, you uh, you behave and treat your DD nicely tonight. None of that, none of that drunken shenanigans going on. Absolutely, sir. <laughs> All right, take it easy. Later. Bye. That was our sexy political analyst, Mr. A, <laughs> Mr. Austin, or AKA Stone Cold Steve Austin, weighing in on the issues. I had nothing to say to him, and he had nothing to say to me, but uh, I found it essential to get someone on the horn today, because it's January 1st, bruh, who I have great back and forth with, and we could talk forever, and she's not always busy like Austin is, would be, um, I'm drawing a blank, I know, oh, Susie, Suzanne, Susan, Susie Q, and this is a young lady in California who would like to deliver the news with me, and I would love to talk to her about these uh, words of inspiration, blah, blah, blah. I actually called her for this show, and she was in the middle of a very loud card game and did not want to... How come everyone's still partying right now? You know, it's the next morning. Okay, it's the middle of the night, so whatever. I'm done. My company went home, and I assume he got home safe. You know who else I would love to get in the studio? Or on the phone, whatever, would be uh, my friend Todd, but he never has shown an interest. But I'm going to grind on him more and more and finally wear him down to where he eventually jumps on the other hot mic. All right, got to go, guys. Love you. We will talk on January 2nd, and I will answer this riveting question that I tried to quiz you on earlier, and perhaps one of these questions I'll know how to pronounce. Got to go, guys. Love you. Bye.